morning, YouTube friends and family. Welcome to today's pre-Valentine adventures of the Wellness Homesteader. So <laughs> this is a good day to stay inside and, and I'll scoot you back and pan the kitchen because you'll be like, oh my word, Kim, what blew up in your kitchen? Looks like something did. I am thinking about each and every one of you praying for your safety. It has been really inclement weather for many states. It's not been so bad where I am in Ohio. I mean, we've had snow off and on, nothing major. Our problem, as you heard, was is the wind. So this morning I've been kind of monitoring. It's been around 30 sustained with gusts up to 50. I don't see any damage. It's hard to tell because it's seven o'clock in the morning. It's still pretty dark outside. So I'm just praying. I am, I am very thankful that I had 55 trees removed. And I know a lot of people were like, oh, you had that many trees removed. Well, a dead tree is no good to anyone, um, you know, except wildlife perhaps, but it was certainly a danger to my home, to my chickens, to my fence, etc. And then a lot of what I had removed were just little saplings that were not healthy and that had encroached out into the yard. So enough about that. So what are we gonna do today? Well, first let me say, this may be filmed over a couple days because I ended up ordering just a couple supplies that I needed craft-wise. Still doing the Three Rivers Challenge. Back here, I still have my salmon patty meal that we're gonna be having today because even though it's not super cold, I think it's in the 20, it's 22, our wind chill is been single digits just because it's the temperature's dropping and we're gonna have below zero wind chills for the next few days at night. So I mucked out the coop. I put deep, deep, fresh bedding in for my girls. And you know, if it gets too cold, I have a coop in the garage. The problem is <laughs> they've gotten bigger since last year when we had the 20 some below. And what happens is it's usually Fancy Ray and Jolene, my two striped barred rock hens. One will get next to the edge of the coop. Still have hiccups, guys, sorry. The other will jump on the first one's back, up, out, and knock it on the back door. <laughs> I got Frankie over here playing with the Echo Show and the chicken's knocking on the door. So um, if I do have to bring them in, I have a strategy. Um, I have an old quilt and the coop is really nice because you can reconfigure it. It's just like hinged metal. I'm gonna put a quilt over the top because they won't be able to get out that way. The sides, you know, they're just like chicken wire, um, sort of a chicken wire. So that, I mean, they'll have plenty of oxygen. It might help keep them warm as well, but whew, Lordy, they haven't laid me an egg in two days. It's looking pretty, pretty empty over here. So, yeah. Glad I have my freeze-dried eggs. Okay, so what are we gonna be doing? Yo, I was never so glad to get all of the decorations down from, as y'all know, I do big harvest, fall, Halloween, all of that. Thanksgiving I did, I did Christmas, and I'm like, I'm so tired of changing the decor. <laughs> and then I'm like, it looks a little better in here. I think I'm gonna do some Valentine's decor. But what I wanted to do is not go out and spend a ton of money buying Valentine decorations. I have a few things and I'm going to show you what I have, but I, I often will get questions of, you know, from girlfriends, how do you think up all of these like displays, you know, for people to look at when you're doing your filming? And so I thought, well, I'll just bring you all along. So the first thing I did was I took my handy dandy notebook and I just kind of made a list like, okay, I want to do the, the tablescape. I like doing something in the windowsill. I like doing something on the island. And I usually will put some sort of a nod to the holiday in the entryway. And that's all I'm gonna do, y'all. So I don't think this is breaking the pantry challenge because frankly, I don't plan to eat any of this. But I did get some Valentine-ish candy. And what I plan to do with it is I'll make up little Valentine gift bags to deliver to my neighbors that have smaller kids. So it's 
out of the house, but um, it looks pretty. And then also I have girlfriends that come over and, and people that can eat it just because I don't. So I did do that. I went to the DG because it's close. The second thing I did was say, okay, I'm gonna need some table linens, maybe a runner. Let me just go through all of my stuff and pull out, first of all, anything that's flagrantly <laughs> Valentine's, like, you know, these little things that you can get at Dollar Tree or whatever. I have a few things. I don't have a ton. Um, let me pull out like a tiered tray that would look good for Valentine's Day, maybe a cake stand, maybe some vases because I also have these little, um, well, hearts. <laughs> Why can't I? Words are hard this early in the morning. Um, I also have a lot of strawberry items, y'all. I have a strawberry canister set. This is vintage cookie jar. I was like, wait, it felt like there was something in there. I have this little strawberry tray. I have this little strawberry that I keep um, my sweetener for my tea in. I don't know if I'll use this. This is a match holder. If you've ever watched my shop with me, you know, for antique vintage stuff, this was a vintage buy. But what occurred to me was, you know what? I have a lot of things that maybe don't say Valentine's Day, but would fit. So one of the first things, I just went into my dining room. Y'all, I have all the things. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Um, one of the things I found that I was really, I totally had forgotten about it because it was in a china hutch, is this, and it, you might not be able to tell, it's actually pink. Let's see if I can show you this. Yeah, you can tell a little bit there. It's not bright pink, it's pale pink. This was my mother's. Ugh. And while it's not Valentine's Day, it is a beautiful candy dish. Of course, I have a lot of milk glass. That was mom's. So we see about using some of that. Then I just have a lot of vintage glass candy jars. And I thought, well, you know, it's icy. So it's kind of winter, kind of Valentine's Day. And I want to be able to leave this up until I'm ready to do maybe a little St. Patty's or even a little bit of Easter. So these are the kind of things I recommend. Go around your house, find things that are whatever color scheme you're gonna use. I'm going to use a lot of red, a lot of pink. I found a bag of plastic strawberries that I can use in something. Um, I have an idea for these as well. I know they're still say fall, but I'm gonna change those up you know, so I can have some candles on the table. So let me kind of reposition and I'll show you my map. Oh, and over here, y'all, in, in an effort, thank you for your purchase. Oh, okay, that fell out of that. In an effort not to spend a bunch of money, I thought, you know what? I have a Cricut. I pay for the Cricut design package because I do use my Cricut a lot. You know, I do use it, I make cards, I do a lot of different things with it. So I went up in my craft room and I pulled out my Cricut. I pulled out my banner maker. Do you remember me sharing this? Mm-hmm. And while, while I was digging around, I also have some card making kits. And this is an Anna Griffin, um, it's a Valentine kit. And so I thought, wouldn't it be cute? Remember when you used to make Valentine boxes when you were a kid? That was like the best time of the year. And then you were like going through your Valentines and you're like, oh, I think Bobby's cute, which is the best Valentine. Let me, let me be like from your friend, you know? <laughs> I loved Valentine's Day as a kid. I don't recall my mom ever really doing anything special. Um, uh, but we decorated shoe boxes, you know, for the Valentine's Day party for the class. And um, I'm sure my mom was room mother at least once, you know, and brought treats. So I thought, you know, I think I want to make a Valentine box. And I found a really cute one that I'm going to use as part of my centerpiece on the table. And I also have, you know, the miscellaneous stuff that you need, you know, your, your paper cutter, your tape runner, a little glue. I'm a little embarrassed to even show you all of this. Um, 
one day I'll get our only scrapbooking done. I just pulled out any kind of scrapbook paper I thought might be appropriate for a banner, for a um, mailbox. You can also make a paper table runner that is absolutely adorable. So I'm gonna kind of put the table together, talk a little bit about why I decided to put what where. We'll do the center island here and the windowsill kind of fill up our candy dishes and then I'm gonna pull out the Cricut and we're gonna start making something cute as a centerpiece for my very own Valentine box. I hope you'll stay tuned. All right, y'all, I'm not great with camera angles. So yeah, I've had a couple people say that my light is too bright because I look pale. And I'm like, no, wait, that's the way I always look. Oh Lord, at least my hair's not shining as much, guys. I finally um, covered my gray. <laughs> Actually, it's silver. So I had an idea, and I'm so, I'm kind of excited about it. So, of course, I had a pink tablecloth, and that is one thing for seasonal decor that works really well for me. I try to have a few basic tablecloths. Um, I have a lot of vintage ones but one for each season so that it's just really easy to change it out. I actually made these, excuse my back, um, quilted placemats. Um, oh gosh, a few years back with all the Valentiny colors and it's uh, just a bright pink on the back so it is reversible. And I use these I think in the fall, just kind of as a place topper. My regular, uh, I think these are Hobby Lobby dishes, yep, made in China, kind of as a charger because I, I thought I had red chargers. I don't have any chargers. And I pulled out my Grandma Victoria's uh, China. Now this is hand wash only. It is NASCO springtime. I have all the pieces. How it survived all the moves in, um, not only my moves, but my grandma's moves, you know, and mom and dad didn't move a ton, but um, this was something that I inherited a number of years ago. And I thought, well, not only is it springy, it's kind of valentine -y. So these are the kind of things I'm talking about, y'all. I am the first one, and I'm not being critical of any anyone else. I am the first one to tell you that because I primarily watch YouTube, I do watch a lot of influencers. I love to watch people cook. I love to watch them shop. I love to watch decor and I love to learn things. And I like history. So <laughs> I watch a lot of YouTube. It's so easy to get sucked into. Mm, I, I want that or I need that because that's what, you know, YouTubers have. Sorry, y'all, I got distracted. It's snowing again. <laughs> Imagine that, right? I don't have any pretty cloth napkins. So I, <laughs> I took... They actually look pretty because it looks embossed. I flipped my Christmas napkins inside out and just laid it on the plate. And I do like to have my table set. Um, it's just a me, a me thing. I'm really bad about eating in the recliner. So over here, I just chose um, the salt and pepper that go with. I have the oil and vinegar, the coffee pot. Like I said, I have it all. And then when I cleaned out my mom's, um, when she moved to assisted living. You know, I need to figure out which year that was because she moved in 2022 was when I cleaned things out. So almost two years ago now, my mom had all the napkins <laughs> and nobody else wanted them. So I took them all. I haven't had to buy napkins and I don't know when. So I found these little pink and white striped ones. I couldn't find any Valentine's ones, but I have like Christmas napkins for the next part of my natural lifetime. <laughs> I have some Easter ones. I, They don't necessarily say Happy Easter. I had New Year ones. That's where having too much stuff can be a blessing and a curse at the same time. And guys, we will get back to doing some more um, decluttering. I've just been working on other things. <laughs> and then over here, I put my strawberry, and then I don't know if y'all have ever seen these. So they come in 
this tin and it is it, this came from the dollar general and it says god so loved the world that he gave me you um meaning my son <laughs> but inside are these little chocolates can't speak for the quality of the chocolate but each one has a little verse on it so it's like a faith-based thing and my little vintage strawberry so you know when folks come over just because i'm not necessarily um I don't necessarily have a lot of um, sweets and treats. I usually have home baked bread and, and that can be like the extent of it. It's nice to have something to offer people. So you'll notice in the middle, this is a cake stand that I received. Let me think about this. Maybe when I was over 20 years ago. Thank you, Julie. I still use it all the time. And Julie is the one who um, made the artichoke dip that we did for my son's favorite dishes. But she got me this and I have used and used and used it. And you can change out the ribbon. I'm not going to because it's perfect for Valentine's Day. So I thought we put our Valentine box, which I'm going to get to make it here in a minute. I thought we put that right there. Let me reposition, show you what I did in the windowsill. And then I'm going to cut some things out on the Cricut. I don't want to like bore you because watching the Cricut machine cut can be super boring, but I may share pieces and parts of how to assemble our little Valentine box. And I, but before I do that, I wanna make, they actually have a paper table runner that is conversation hearts that I wanna use on my island. So having a lot of fun, you know, a little of this and that that I had on hand without breaking the bank, which is really nice. I don't know that it will be in, this video, or if this is gonna be two videos, guys, I can get really long and I don't wanna like overburden you with just chitter, chitter chat. But um, yeah, I have a few projects I want to make and I don't know whether it's like two video worthy. <laughs> so anyway, hold tight. Let's go look at our windowsill. So I, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, the snow out there, but I took two bud vases I noticed when I was at, I'm so sorry y'all with these hiccups. <clears throat> oh my word. When I was at the DG yesterday, they still had those and it came in a pack of four and I've had these for years. Um, they're a little bedraggled looking, but you know, they don't really show in the windowsill. And then in mom's dish, I put the plastic strawberries. I put some good and plenty in here. And then these are pink, red, and my kitchen blue little dum dum valentine suckers so uh, probably not the good and plenty since it's open and touchable but the suckers will be one of the things that i use to make some gift bags for the neighbor kids so i thought this turned out really in good. terms of the entryway um i this is actually a christmas wreath y'all believe it or not it has a tag that says merry christmas i just tucked it up in there because i thought well these are kind of valentiney colors and then I like to put a banner. This is called a quilt cupboard. And even though it's quite country and it doesn't really fit mid-century modern, has a lot of family treasures in it. And um, yeah, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to divest myself. Um, I have some conversation hearts. I'm gonna perhaps put some in here. I'm, I'd rather have wrapped candy only because the furnace vents right there and I don't want it blowing dust on uncovered candy but I think we need some kind of a little garland or banner right there and then in my island area this is also a cute area to make a banner or a garland so let me get busy on the Cricut and I'll bring you back to show you what I've created so in case any of you have never seen a Cricut die cutting machine I'm using my iPad here, and this is what it's going to be drawing. And then my Cricut has the ability to write with special markers. So it's writing the words, you are cute. And then once it finishes writing, it will then cut the heart around. So let's give it just a second to show you that. it hesitates <laughs> okay here we go I'm not as crazy about this light grip 
matte as I am with some of the others, so I'm hoping that it will um, not pull off of the matte. And that's all there is to it. Once it's finished, it'll tell you to unload. And there you have it. Isn't that adorable? Y'all, I'm pretty excited about this. So this project made eight hearts, but I decided I wanted it a little bit bigger. So I went ahead and remade a couple of the sayings. I don't think you're like, I don't even know where the two are that match, but um, I used a lighter pink, a hot pink, the kind of teal blue that kind of matches the kitchen and a cream color and a red. And then you just lay them out randomly. And then the instructions actually say, use pop dots to hold it together. I'm not sure I want to use pop dots. Um, I think the easiest way to do it would be to use like a quick drying glue or a tape runner, which y'all, there's so much stuff in this kitchen. I never did pan around because I was like too embarrassed to show me. <laughs> Got my lunch fixings over here. Um, so either like a mega runner or I like this um, acid-free, dries, clear, no wrinkle, non-toxic paper studio glue. Um, I know you wouldn't want to wiggle it around a bunch but I almost think the glue would be better. Now, is this something that I'm going to be able to use year after year? Probably not. Um, actually, if I use the pop dots, maybe so. So let's, let me see here. I just, I just don't know, guys. I just don't know. Did I mention I don't know? <laughs> oh gosh, and I've gotten such a kick out of how many of you say I look like Lucille Ball. I mean, like what a comp no doubt see guys I'm not even sure like eh, I guess put it on this it would make it more dimensional okay I like the pop top <laughs> all right I'm gonna get this assembled and then we are going to put a small tiered tray with a few valentine -y things on it I did go ahead y'all and put up excuse my purse hanging there, my Candyland Express wreath, because it is Valentine's colors. It's technically, I guess, a Christmas wreath, but I don't have a Valentine wreath. So one of the things that I'm waiting on is just a, like one thing I needed. I want to make a wood round and paint it and letter it. Oh my word, it's pouring the snow for the front door. So we may have to do that in a separate video because I've been chitty chatting too much. All right, let me get this assembled and build the tiered tray and I'll bring you back to show the final product. Now pay no attention to the mess on the counter. I could not be more tickled. Y'all, this thing came out so stinking cute. And I was going to put the tiered tray on it, but it really took away from, you know, the look. Might need one more pop dot. <laughs> So over here on my tiered tray, let me kind of come around here and show you. I have an empty candy box, just some of the little um, like tiered tray ornaments. This I think came from Dollar Tree. This little cake pick was actually something I found in my mom's house. And now I can't get it back there like I want it. There we go. And um, just some red and white vintage coffee cups from my good friends Peggy and Norm over at Crazy for Retro. And um, I didn't ask, but um, Miss Cindy, I saved your Valentine and I think it is just perfect. So I save all y'all's cards. <laughs> See why I have too much stuff? So I'm really pleased with the table thus far, the window, this, the wreath. Let's get on to making a couple other things. And um, let me check where I am on time. I'll either come back and um, say goodbye for the day. I don't think I will. I think I'll, I'll keep on decorating, but 
um, the outdoor door hanger that I'm going to make will be a separate video um, and it will be a craft video coming up. All right, guys, hang on. Stay tuned. All right, uh, in the interest of time, I went ahead and I cut out all of the materials that we're going to need for our Valentine box. And I will be doing the actual box as well as the door hanger on part two of this video. I don't want to make it so long that, you know, it's a snooze fest. <laughs> I love it, but I don't know if y'all love it. So I did want to show you just really quick one neat thing. Can y'all see? Yeah, those are my done peas. They have sprouted. They're not quite ready yet. And I have a few sprouts. I don't know if y'all can really even see that in the um, garbanzo beans. They are much slower to sprout, but they are starting to poke out the ends. and. The sunflower seeds for the girls are also starting to sprout. So we're making progress <laughs> and it's still snowing, but it, it doesn't seem to be accumulating much. It's more flurries. So if you would do me a big favor, if you've made it this far, go ahead and smash that like button. Drop me a comment below. What do you do in lieu of Valentine's Day decor? Do you bake a special treat? Do you have a special meal? I would love to hear what your traditions are for you and your family. I will see you all a little later this week with part two. And until I see you again, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and take care.